हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज चैप्टर सेकेंड मेजर अप्रोचेस टू द हिस्ट्री ऑफ मॉडर्न इंडिया ठीक है देखते हैं क्या लिखा हुआ है कि लुकिंग एट हाउ हिस्ट्री हाउ हिस्ट्रीज आर रिटर्न इन इज पार्ट ऑफ द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द इंटेलेक्चुअल हिस्ट्री ऑफ द पीरियड अंडर डिस्कशन एंड कैन प्रोवाइड अ वेराइटी ऑफ आइडियाज एंड एक्सप्लेनेशन द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट इज द इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ अ सोसाइटी दे फो हैज टू बी अ फैमिलियरिटी विद इट्स हिस्टोरियोग्राफी द स्टडी ऑफ हिस्टोरिकल इंटरप्रिटेशन दिस प्रोवाइड्स रिकोगशन ऑफ द इंटेलेक्चुअल कॉन्टेक्सट ऑफ हिस्ट्री इंस्टेड ऑफ सींग हिस्ट्री एज जस्ट अ नरेशन ऑफ इवेंट्स द मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया फॉर द कन्वीनियंस ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग कैन बी रीड ब्रॉडली अंडर द फोर अप्रोचेज द कॉलोनियल और द और द इम्परलिस्ट नेशनलिस्ट मार्क्सिस्ट एंड सुबाल्टन each with its own distinct uh, distinct characteristics and modes of interpretation however there are other approaches communalist cambridge liberal and new liberal theek and feminist interpretations which have also influenced historical writing on modern india let's see second top, uh, next topic hamare paas colonial approach or the historiography hmm? For the major part of the 19th century the colonial school occupied a high position in India the term colonial approach has been used in two senses one related to the history of the colonial countries uh, while the other referred to the works which were influenced by the colonial ideology of domination it is in the second sense that uh, most historians today write about the colonial historiography uh, in fact the practice of writing about the colonial countries by the colonial officials was related to the desire for domination and justification of the colonial rule hence in most such historical works there was criticism of indigenous society and culture simultaneously there was praise for the western culture and values and glorification of the individuals who established the colonial empires the histories of india written by james mill uh, mount stuart uh, elphinstone vincent smith and many others are pertinent examples of the colonial historiographical trends certain characteristics common uh, to most of the works of these historians are as follows this is the first hai orientalist representation of india second hai the opinion that the british brought unity to india third the notions of social darwinism the english considered themselves superior to the natives and the fittest to rule fourth India viewed as a stagnant society which required guidance from the British white man's burden ye to sabhi ko pata hai har ek ko matlab white man matlab apne aap ko to white man burden nahi mante the wo log and fifth establishing pax britannica to bring law and order and peace to a breaking society theek next topic hai nationalist historiography approach the nationalist history, the nationalist approach to indian uh, history can be described as one which tends to contribute to the growth of nationalist feeling and to unify people in the face of religious caste and linguistic differences or class differentiation this approach looks at the national movement as a as a movement of the indian people which grew out of the growing awareness among uh, among all people of the exploitative nature of colonial rule this approach developed as a response to and in confrontation with the colonial approach and it should be noted that the nationalist historians of modern india did not exist before 1947 before 1947 nationalist historiography mainly dealt with the ancient and medieval period of indian history and however in the last quarter of the 19th century a detailed and scientific critique of colonialism for the adverse economic aspects of alien rule was developed by nationalist like dada bhai nehru ji mg ranade jv joshi rc dat kt telang gk gokhale and de ivacha the only account of the uh, national movement was was by nationalist leaders not historians such as rj pradhan ac majumdar jail nehru and pata bhai uh, pata bhi sitaramaiya rc majumdar and tara chand are noted nationalist historians of modern india theek hai नेक्स्ट टॉपिक है हमारे पास मार्क्सिस्ट हिस्टोग्राफी और अप्रोच अभी नेशनलिस्ट पढ़ चुके हैं कोरोना पढ़ चुके हैं अब नेक्स्ट हमारे पास मार्क्सिस्ट द बिगनिंग ऑफ द मार्क्सिस्ट अप्रोच इन इंडिया वाज हेराल्डेड बाय टू क्लासिक बुक्स रजनी पाम दत्स इंडिया टुडे एंड ए आर देसाई सोशल बैकग्राउंड ऑफ इंडियन नेशनलिज्म ओरिजिनली रिटर्न फॉर द फेमस लेफ्ट बुक क्लब इन इंग्लैंड इंडिया टुडे 
first published in 1940 in England, was later published in India in 1947. A.R. Desai's Social Background of Indian Nationalism was first published in 1948. Unlike the imperialist or colonial approach, the Marxist historians clearly see the primary, uh, primary contradiction between the interest of the colonial masters and the subject people, as well as the process of the nation in the making. Unlike the nationalists, they also take full note of the inner contradictions between the different uh, sections of the people of the Indian society and however, some of them, particularly Rajni Palm, Rajni Palm Dutt, were unable to uh, fully integrate their treatment of the primary anti-imperialist contradiction and the secondary inner contradictions are tended to, to counterbalance the anti-imperialist struggle with the class or social struggle. They tend to see the national movement as a structured as a structured bourgeoisie. Bourgeoisie is written, but I mean, I bourgeois class. Okay? Uh, as a structured bourgeois movement, if not the bourgeois movement and uh, miss its uh, open-ended and all-class character. Another noted Marxist historian who made a critique of Arbidat's paradigm is Sumit Sankar. Sumit Sarkar, sorry. Sumit Sarkar. He considered uh, he considers that the paradigm as a simplistic uh, version of the Marxian class approach. He looks at the nationalist leader in the light of intelligentsia, which acts as a kind of proxy for as yet passive social forces with which it had little organic connection. A.R. Desai traces the growth of the national movement in five phases, each phase based on particular uh, social classes which supported the uh, sustained it. Next, we have a subaltern approach or the histography. This school of thought began in the early 1980s under the editorship of uh, Ranjit Guha as a critic of the existing histography, which was faulted for ignoring the voice of the people. Right from the beginning, subaltern histography took the position that the entire tradition of Indian histography had an elitist bias. For the subaltern historians, the basic contradiction in Indian society is the colonial approach colonial epoch was between the elite, both Indian and foreign on the one hand and a subaltern group on the other hand and, the, and not between colonialism and the Indian people. However, they do, not, uh, they do not subscribe to the Marxist theory of the nature of the exploitation by the nationalist movement. They point out that the Indian society of the time could not be seen in terms of class alone as capitalism in the country was just nascent at that time. At the time. This school sees nationalism as exploitative in terms of caste, gender, religions, and creed divisions. Nationalism, say the subaltern, ignored the internal contradictions within the society as well as what the marginalized represented or had to say. They believe that the Indian people were never united in a common anti-imperialist struggle, that, uh, that were no such entity as the Indian national movement. Instead, they assert there were uh, two distinct movements or streams, the real anti-imperialist stream or, uh, of the subaltern and the bogus national movement of the elite. The elite, uh, the elite streams led by the official leadership of the Indian National Congress were little more than a cloak for the struggle for power among the elite. Next topic, I might pass, a communist approach. Hmm? The historians of this school, relying completely on the uh, colonial historiography of medieval India, of medieval India and colonial era textbooks, viewed, uh, viewed Hindus and Muslims are permanent hostile groups whose interests were mutually different and uh, um, antagonistic to each other. This view was not only reflected in the writings of the historians, but also took a more uh, virulent form in the hands of the communal uh, political leaders. In their view, India's medieval history was one long story of Hindu-Muslim conflict. As a corollary of this view, it was then argued that the 19th and the 20th century Muslim had the happy and proud ever-present memory of having, uh, of having been the ruling class, while Hindus had the sad and humiliating memory of having uh, been the subject race. This ultimately developed mutual hatred among these groups often resulting in communal rights and in the end led to the partition of India. Next topic is Cambridge School. 
According to this school of thoughts, the fundamental contradiction under colonial rule was not uh, between imperialism and the Indian people, but among the Indian themselves. For the Indian nationalism was not uh, the product of a struggle of the Indian people against colonial exploitation, but what arose from conflict among the Indians and getting the benefits giving, given to them by the British rulers. The leaders of the national movements, according to this school, were inspired by the quest for power and material benefits. This approach has been criticized by many scholars on the ground that it takes the mind or ideals out of human behavior and reduces nationalism to animal politics. Next topic is liberal and neoliberal in, uh, interpretation. According to this interpretation, the economic exploitation of the colonial was not beneficial to the, uh, to the British people as a whole. The availability of markets for uh, British uh, industrial goods in the colonial world and capital investment in overseas market, like, lying, uh, like laying off uh, railways in India, might have actually discouraged domestic investment and delayed the development of the new indust industries in Britain. The proponent of this school of thought uh, are Patrick O'Brien, Hopkins and Kane. Next topic is feminist historiography. Hmm? The shift in terms of the writing of women's history, history began with the women's movement in, of the 1970s which provided the context and impetus for the emergence of women's studies in India. Very soon women's history uh, broadened, the, broadened and assumed the, assumed the more complex shape of gender history. In the early years, the endeavor was to write a history of women to supplement the writings of the mainstream history. Also, an attempt was made to uh, research and compile and achieve of women's writing. An important area of research has been analysis of the way in which colonial structures such as the legal structure affected women's lives, women's vulnerability due to the denial of ownership of productive resources has been focused on in the analysis of how progressive laws shaped gender relations. In the colonial period, two works based upon the women's quest in India, The High Caste Hindu Woman 1887 by Pandita Ramabai and Mother India 1927 by Catherine Mayo attracted international attention. This is the completion of this chapter and we are going to literally uh, stick the summary on this video at the last. Okay, so you can go through the content and uh, the major perspective of this uh, reading the book is that you must be knowing that each and every uh, corner of the India we are studying, uh, we are literally starting with the modern India, then uh, I'm literally going to just take some couple of subjects also. Okay, so check it out and uh, uh, literally I'm about to make a um, this uh, YouTube channel, uh, sorry, uh, WhatsApp channel. Okay, us me aake bhannu baadein milte hain. Okay, till then, bye bye. Hello everyone. Start karte hain second unit. Second unit ka name hai uh, Advent of Europeans and Consolidation of British Power in India. Hmm? इसमें थर्ड चैप्टर है हम लोग पहले फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड चैप्टर पहले कर चुके हैं थर्ड चैप्टर है एडवेंट ऑफ द यूरोपियंस इन इंडिया ठीक है वी आर स्टार्टिंग दो वी टॉक ऑफ एंशिएंट मेडिवल एंड मॉडर्न पीरियड्स इन हिस्ट्री एंड हिस्ट्री इज अ कंटिन्यूटी इट इज नॉट ऑलवेज इजी टू डिस्टिंगश क्लियरली व्हेन वन पीरियड एंड्स एंड अनदर बिगिंस so if we think of the history of modern india as beginning with the advent of the europeans we need to go back to what is generally considered the medieval period that is the 15th century itself indeed to a time even before the mughals came and established their empire first topic hamare paas the portuguese in india okay the quest for and discovery of a sea route to india so after the decline of the Roman Empire in the 7th, 7th century, uh, the Arabs had established their domin domination in Egypt and Persia. Direct contact between the Europeans and India declined and with that, the easy accessibility to the Indian community like spices, uh, calicos, silk and various, pre uh, various precious stones that were greatly in demand was affected. In, uh, in 1453, Constantinople fall, uh, fell to the Ottoman uh, Turks who were on the ascendant. Merchandise from India went to the European markets through Arab Muslim intermediaries 
and the Red Sea trade route was a state monopoly from which Islamic rulers earned tremendous revenues. Okay? The land routes to India were also controlled by the Arabs in the um, and in the circumstances, the Europeans were keen to find a direct sea route to India. 15th century, Europe was gripped by a spirit of the Renaissance with its call for explore, exploration. At the same time, Europe made great advances in the art of shipbuilding and navigation. Hence, there was an eagerness all over the Europe for adventurous sea voyage to reach the unknown corners of the East. The economic development of many regions of Europe was also prog uh, progressing rapidly and uh, with expansion of land under cultivation, the introduction of an improved plug, uh, plow, scientific crop management such as crop rotation and increased supply of meat, which called for spices for cooking as well as for preservation. Prosperity also grew and with it the demand for uh, oriental luxury goods also increased. Venice and Geneva, had, which had earlier prospered through a trade in uh, oriental goods, were too small to take on the mighty Ottoman Turks or to take up major exploration on their own. The North Europeans, uh, the North Europeans were ready to aid Portugal and Spain with money and men, even uh, as the Genoese uh, were ready to provide ships and technical knowledge. It is also to be noted that Portugal uh, had assumed the leadership in um, Christendom's uh, resistance to Islam even as it had taken on itself the spirit of exploration that had characterized the genesis. Historians have observed that uh, uh, the idea of finding idea of finding an ocean road to sea had become an obsession for Prince Henry of Portugal who had nicknamed the navigator. Also he was keen to find a way to uh, circumvent the Muslim domination of the Eastern Mediterranean and all the routes that connected India to Europe. Pope Nicholas V gave Prince Henry a bull in 1454, conferring, to, uh, conferring on him the right to navigate the sea to the distant shores of the Orient. More specifically, as far as India is uh, in an attempt to fight Islamic influence and spread the Christian, uh, Christian faith. However, Prince Henry died before his dream came, became a reality. In 1497, under the Treaty of uh, Tordesillas, 1494, the ruler of Portugal and Spain divided the non-Christian world between them by an imaginary line in the Atlantic, some 1300 miles west to the Cape, uh, Cape Verde, uh, Verde Island. Under the treaty, Portugal could claim and occupy everything to the east of the line, while Spain could claim everything to the west. The situation was thus prepared for the Portuguese incursions into the waters around the India. It was, in 80, uh, it was in 1487 that the Portuguese navigator uh, Bartholome Diaz, Bartholome Diaz rounded the Cape of Good Hope in Africa and sailed up to the eastern coast. He was well convinced that the long sought after sea route to India had been found. But it was only 10 years later that an expedition of Portuguese ships set out for India in, 19, uh, in 1497 and arrived in India in slightly less than 11 months time in May 1498. Okay. Next topic is uh, from trading to ruling. Okay. This is just uh, the Portuguese in India. Mein chal hai. Main topic hai. Usi mein paas sub topic hai from trading to ruling. So, first of all, we have Vasco de Gama. Hmm? The arrival of three ships under Vasco de Gama led by, uh, led by a Gujarati pilot named Abdul Majid. At, uh, at Calicut in May uh, 1498, it profoundly affected the course of Indian history. The Hindu ruler of Calicut, the Zamorin, uh, however, had no apprehension as to the Europeans' intentions, as the prosperity of his kingdom was due to Calicut's position as an, uh, as an antipot. He accorded a friendly reception to Vasco de Gama. The Arab traders who had a good business on the Malabar coast were apprehensive and were not uh, and were not keen on the Portuguese getting a hold there. For centuries, the trading system in the Indian uh, in the Indian Ocean had uh, had numerous participants: Indian, Arabs, Africans from the East Coast, Chinese, uh, Javanese, uh, among others. And but these participants had acted according according to uh, some 
tacit rules of conduct and none uh, had sought overwhelming dominance though all were in it for profit the portuguese changed that they wanted to monopolize the hugely profitable eastern trade by excluding competitors especially the arabs vasco da gama stayed in india for 3 months when he returned to uh, when he returned to portugal he carried back with him a rich cargo and sold the merchant merchandise in the european market at a huge profit the importance of direct access to the pepper trade was made clear by the fact that elsewhere the europeans who had to buy through muslim middlemen would have had to spend 10 times as much for the same uh, amount of pepper not surprisingly uh, other profit seeking merchants of european nations were tempted to come to india and trade directly a voyage was undertaken by uh, petro alvarez cabral to trade for spices he he uh, negotiated and established a factory at calicut where he arrived in september 1500 there was an incident of conflict when the portuguese factory at calicut was attacked by the locals resulting in the death of several portuguese in retaliation cabral seized a number of arab merchant ships uh, anchored in the harbor and killed hundreds of their crew besides confiscating their cargo and burning the ship Calicut was bombarded by uh, Cabral later Cabral succeeded in making advantages treaties with the local ruler rulers of Cochin and Kananur Vasco da Gama once again came to India in 1501 the Zamorin declined to exclude the Arab merchants in favor of the Portuguese when Vasco da Gama combined commercial greed with ferocious hostility and wreaked uh, vengeance vengeance on Arab shipping uh, wherever he could His rupture with the Zamorin uh, thus became total and complete. Vasco da Gama set up a trading factory at Kananur. Gradually, Calicut, Kananur, and Cochin became the important trade centers of the Portuguese. Gradually, under the pretext of protecting the factories and their trading activities, the Portuguese got permission to fortify these centers. Hmm? नेक्स्ट है हमारे पास जो ट्रैवलर आते थे ये है फ्रांसिस्को डी एल मेरा इन फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड फाइव द किंग ऑफ पोर्टुगल अपॉइंटेड आ गवर्नर इन इंडिया फॉर अ थ्री ईयर टर्म एंड इक्विप्ड द इनकम्पेंट विद सफिशियंट फोर्स टू प्रोटेक्ट द पोर्टुगीज इंटरेस्ट फ्रांसिस्को डी एल मेरा द न्यूली अपॉइंटेड गवर्नर वॉज आज टू कंसोलिडेट द पोजिशन ऑफ द पोर्टुगीज इन इंडिया एंड टू डिस्ट्रॉय मुस्लिम ट्रेड बाई सीजिंग एडिन ऑर्मज एंड मलेका ही वॉज ऑल्सो एडवाइज टू बिल्ड फोर्ट्रेस एट Anjadeva Anjadeva Cochin Kananur and Kilwa what Almeida however encountered encountered along with the opposition of the Zamorin was a threat from the uh, Mamluk Sultan of Egypt encouraged by the merchants of Venice whose lucrative commerce was now at risk due to the Portuguese interference the Egyptians raised a fleet in the Red Sea to stop the advance of the Portuguese in 1507 the Portuguese squadron was defeated in a in a naval battle of due uh, by the combined egyptian and uh, gujarat navies and almeida son was killed next year almeida uh, avenged his defeat by totally crushing the two navies almeida's vision was to make the portuguese the master of the indian ocean his policy was known as blue water policy carcase system it was also known as carcase system okay next aate hain isi mein uh, sequence mein uh, alfonso de albi albu ंग्रिका of the uh, red sea the ormus in malabar and at malacca the portuguese under Al- albuquerque uh, bolstered their stronghold their stranglehold hold by introducing a permit system for other ships and exercising control over the major ship building centers in the region the non availability of timber in the gulf and red sea region for a ship building also helped the portuguese in their objectives Albi Kirkyu acquired Goa from Sultan of Bijapur in 1510 with the ease 
and the principal port of the Sultan of Bijapur became the first bit of Indian territory to be under the Europeans since the time of Alexander the Great. An interesting feature of his rule was the abolition of Sati. Hmm? The Portuguese men uh, who had came on the voyage and stayed back in India were from Albuquerque's days encouraged to take local wives. In Goa and the province of the north, they established themselves as village landlords, often building new roads and irrigation works, introducing new crops like tobacco and cashew nut, or better plantation varieties of uh, coconut besides planting large groves of coconut to meet the need for uh, coir, rigging and uh, cordage. In the cities such as Goa and Cochin, they settled as artisans and master craftsmen. Besides being traders, most of such Portuguese came to look upon their new settlements rather than Portugal as home. Next, Nino da Cunha. Nino, uh, Nino da Cunha assumed office of the governor of Portuguese interest in India in November 1529 and almost one year later shifted the headquarters of the Portuguese gover government in India from Cochin to Goa. Badu Shah of Gujarat, during his conflict with the Mughal Emperor Humayu, secured help from the Portuguese by ceding to them in 15, uh, 1534 the island of Basin with its dependencies and revenues. He also promised them a base in Deo. However, Badu Shah's relations with the Portuguese became sore when Humayu withdrew from Gujarat in 1536. Since the inhabitants of the town started fighting with the Portuguese, Badu Shah wanted to raise a wall of a partition. Opposing this, the Portuguese started negotiations, in the course of which the ruler of Gujarat was invited to a Portuguese ship and killed in 1537. The Kuna also attempted to increase Portuguese influence in Bengal by settling many Portuguese nationals there with Hooghly as their headquarters. Favorite favorable conditions for portuguese can in india uh, expecting gujarat in india expecting gujarat which was ruled by a uh, by the powerful uh, mahmud begara 1458 to 1511 the northern part uh, was much divided among many small uh, powers in the deccan the bahmani kingdom was breaking up into smaller kingdoms none of the power had a navy worth its name nor did they think of developing their naval strength. In the Far East, the imperial decree of the Chinese emperor limited the navigational reach of the Chinese ship as regards the Arab merchants and ship owners who until, they who until then dominated the Indian Ocean trade. They had nothing to match the, or the organization and unity of the Portuguese. Moreover, the Portuguese had cannons placed on their ships. Both the advanced uh, type of Europeans who naval the British ko bhi aap dekh sakte hai, and you uh, can Spanish, uh, Spanish ko bhi dekh sakte hai, aur Portuguese ko bhi dekh sakte hai. They are very very much advanced in the naval battle. Correct. Next hai, topic uh, Portuguese state. The general tendency is to uh, to underestimate the Portuguese hold in India. However, the Estado Portuguese, Portuguese, the India, state of the Portuguese India, uh, Portuguese India, was in fact a larger element in Indian history than it is given credit for. Many of the coastal parts of India had come under Portuguese power within 50 years of Vasco da Gama arrival. The Portuguese had occupied some 60 miles of coast around Goa, on the west coast from Mumbai, Mumbai to Daman and Deo to the approaches to Gujarat. They control a narrow tract with four important ports and a hundred of towns and villages. In the south, they had under them a chain of seaport fortresses and trading posts like Mangalore, Kananur, Cochin and Calicut. And though their power in Malabar was not consolidated, it was enough to ensure influence or control over the local rulers who held the spice growing land. The Portuguese established further military posts and settlements on the east coast at uh, Santhom in Chennai and Nagapatnam in Andhra. Towards the end of the 16th century, a wealthy settlement has had grown at Hooghly in West Bengal. Envoys and uh, envoys and ambassador were exchanged between Goa, uh, exchanged between Goa 
and and many of the major kingdom in India of the time. Treaties were signed between Goa and Deccan Sultan in 1570, which were regularly renewed as long as the kingdom lasted. The Portuguese al uh, always had a role to play in the successive battles for the balance of power between Vijayanagar and the Deccan Sultans, between the Deccanese and the Mughals, and between the Mughals and the Marathas. Interestingly, the Portuguese, the first Europeans to came to India, were also, la also the last to leave this land. It was in 1961 before the government of India recaptured Goa, Daman and Diu from them. Okay, so you talk about Goa tha and Daman and Diu. Tha. Portuguese administration in India. The head of the administration was the viceroy who served for three years with his secretary and in later years a council. Next in importance came the uh, Vedo the Fazenda responsible for uh, revenues and the cargoes and dispatch of fleets. The fortresses from Africa to China were under captains and assisted by factors whose power was increased by the difficulties of communication and was too often used for personal ends. Next topic is religious policy of the Portuguese. The Moors were the bitter enemies of the Portuguese in North America, sorry, in North Africa. So were the Arabs. Arriving in the East, the Portuguese brought with them the same zeal of uh, promote Christianity and the wish to persecute all Muslims. Intolerant towards the Muslims, the Portuguese were initially quite tolerant towards the Hindus. However, over time, after the introduction of the uh, Inquisition in Goa, there was a change and Hindus were also persecuted. But, in spite of this uh, intolerant behavior, the, the GCS made a good impression at the court of Akbar, mainly due to the Mughal emperor's interest in questions of theology. In September 1579, Akbar forwarded a letter to the authorities at Goa requesting them to send two learned priests. The church authorities in Goa eagerly accepted the invitation, seeing it, seeing in uh, it a chance it a chance to convert the emperor to Christianity and with him his court and the people, Jesus father Rodolfo uh, Aquaviva and uh, Antonio Monserrat. These are both fathers. Ke naam hai, hai? Uh, Rodolfo Aquaviva and Antonio Monserrat were selected for the purpose. When they reached Fatehpo Sikri on February 28, 1580, they were received with honor. Aquaviva and Monserrat Aquaviva and Monserrat went back in 1853, belying the hopes the Portuguese entertained of Akbar's conversion to the Christian faith. The second mission called by Akbar in 1590 also ended on a similar note in 1592. The third mission, again invited by Akbar, arrived in 1595 at Lahore, where the court was then residing uh, and continued as a sort of permanent institution thereby extending its influence on secular policies. Father Jerome Xavier and Emmanuel uh, Pinheiro were the leader of the mission and their letters from the court became very widely known for the information they provided on the later part of Akbar's reign. <laughs> Akbar bhai sab pahal bana rahe sabko. Prince Salim on ascending the throne uh, as Jahangir, as Jahangir uh, assuaged, the Muslim by neglecting the uh, Jesus fathers, gradually, however, his contemporary uh, estrangement from the Jesus ended, and in 1606 he renewed his favor to them. The elegant and spacious church at Lahore was allowed to be retained by them, along uh, along with the collegium or the priestly uh, re residence. In 1608, 20, 20 uh, baptisms were carried out in Agra. The priest publicly act, uh, acting with as much liberty as in Portugal. Jahangir's conduct was such that the Jesuit priest became hopeful of bringing him uh, within the Christian fold. However, these hopes were belayed. Moreover, arrogant action on the part of the Portuguese viceroys created a rift with the Mughal emperor. Portuguese lose favor with the Mughals. This is a topic. Okay. In 1608, Captain William Hawkins and his ship Hector reached Surat. He brought with him a letter from James I, 
king of england to the mughal court of jahangir requesting permission to do business in india father pinhero and the portuguese authorities did their best to prevent hawkins from reaching the mughal court but did not succeed jahangir accepted the gift hawkins brought for him and gave hawkins a very favorable re- reception in 1609 As Hawkins knew the uh, Turkish language well, he conversed with the emperor in that language without the aid of an interpreter. Interpreter. इसको बोलते हैं middle man. Pleased with Hawkins, Jahangir appointed him as a mansabdar of four hundred at a salary of rupees thirty thousand. Apparently, he never received it. Hawkins was also married to the daughter of an uh, Armenian Christian uh, named Mubarak Shah. Mubarak Shah. ठीक है मुबारक शाह नाम है उसका ठीक है द ग्रांट द ग्रांट ऑफ ट्रेडिंग फैसिलिटीज टू द इंग्लिश ऑफेंडेड द पोर्टुगीज हाई एवर आफ्टर नेगोशिएशन अ ट्रूस वॉज इस्टेब्लिश बिटवीन द पोर्टुगीज एंड द मुगल एम्पर द पोर्टुगीज स्टॉप द इंग्लिश शिप्स फ्रॉम एंटरिंग द पोर्ट ऑफ सूरत अ बैफल्ड हॉकिंग्स लेफ्ट द मुगल कोर्ट इन सिक्सटीन इलेवन टू अनेबल टू काउंटर द पोर्टुगीज इंटरग्रीज और चेक द वैसी मुगल पॉलिसीज However, in November 1612, the English uh, ship Dragon, under Captain Best, along uh, with the little ship, the Oceander, Oceander, successfully fought a Portuguese fleet. Jahangir, who had no uh, navy, Jahangir, who had no navy, was its name. Learned of the English success and was greatly impressed. The Portuguese act of piracy uh, also resulted in conflict with the Imperial uh, Mughal government. and in in 1613 the uh, portuguese offended offended jahangir by capturing mughal ships imprisoning many muslims and uh, plundering the cargoes and enraged jahangir ordered mukarrab khan who was then in charge of surat to obtain compensation however it was during the reign of shah jahan that the advantages which which the uh, portuguese enjoyed in the mughal court which the portuguese enjoyed in the mughal court were lost forever also lost were the hopes of converting the royal family and mughal india to christianity a hope that the portuguese held because of the welcome accorded to them and their religion by akbar and jahangir the now the next topic is the capture of hugli hmm? On the basis of imperial farman uh, circa 1579 the portuguese had settled down on a river bank which was a short distance from uh, sadgaon in bengal to carry on their trading activities over the years they strengthened their position by uh, constructing big buildings which led to the uh, migration of the trade from sadgaon to the new port known as hugli they monopolized the manufacture of salt built a custom house of their own and started enforcing strictly the levy of duty on tobacco which had become which had become an important article of trade since its introduction at the beginning of the 17th century the portkis did not only made money as traders but also started a cruel slave trade by purchasing or seizing hindu and muslim children whom they brought up as christians in the course of their uh, nefarious activities they seized two slave girls of mumtaz mahal टू स्लेव गर्ल ऑफ मुमताज मैं भी सोचा कि जो सर्वेंट्स होते हैं ना उनको मतलब उन्होंने कैप्चर कर लिया ऑन जून ट्वेंटी फोर सिक्सटीन थर्टी टू द मुगल सीज ऑफ हुगली बिगेन एंडिंग इन इट्स कैप्चर थ्री मंथस लेटर शाहजहाँ ऑर्डर द बंगाल गवर्नर काजिम खान टू टेक एक्शन अगेंस्ट द पोर्टुगीज द सीज ऑफ हुगली फाइनली लेट टू द पोर्टुगीज फ्लिंग द मुगल्स द मुगल्स सफर्ड अ लॉस ऑफ वन थाउजेंड मैन बट ऑल्सो टूक फोर हंड्रेड प्रिजनर्स टू आगरा The prisoners were offered the option to convert to Islam or become slaves. The persecution of Christians continued for some time, after which it died down gradually. Now the next topic is uh, decline of the Portuguese. By the 18th century, the Portuguese in India lost their commercial influence, though some of them still car- still carried on trade in their individual capacity, and many took to piracy and robbery. In fact, Hugli was used by some Portuguese as a base for piracy in the Bay of Bengal. The decline of the Portuguese was brought about uh, by several factors. The local advantages gained by the Portuguese in India were reduced with the emergence of power, uh, powerful dynasties in Egypt, Persia, and North India, and the rise of the turbulent Marathas as their immediate neighbors. 
the marathas captured uh, salicet and basin in 1739 from the portuguese theek hai acha ye pata hai na jab ye kar rahe hain to uska matlab ye ye cheeze brackets mein likhi hui hain the religious policies of the portuguese such as the activities of the um, jesuits gave rise to political feud and their uh, antagonism for the muslim apart the portuguese policy of conversion of uh, conversion to christianity made hindu uh, made hindus also uh, resentful their dishonest uh, trade practices also evoked a strong reaction the portuguese earned uh, notoriety as sea pirates their arrogance and violence brought them the uh, animosity of the rulers of small state and the imperial moguls as well the discovery of brazil diverted colonizing activities of uh, portugal to the west the union of the two kingdoms of spain and portugal in 1580 or 81 dragging the smaller kingdoms into spain's um, spain's war with england and holland badly affecting uh, badly affected portuguese monopoly of trade in india the earlier monopoly of the knowledge of the sea route or sea route to india held by the portuguese could not remain a secret forever soon enough uh, soon enough the dutch and the english who were learning the skill of ocean navigation also learned of it as new trading communities from europe arriving in india there began a fierce rivalry among them in this struggle the portuguese had to give way to the more powerful and enterprising competitors the dutch and the english had greater resources and more compulsion to expand overseas and they overcome and they overcame the portuguese resistance only one by one one by one the portuguese position fell to its opponent Goa, which remained with the Portuguese, had lost its importance as a port after the fall of the Vijayanagar Empire, and soon it did not matter in whose position it was. The spice trade came under the control of the Dutch, and the Goa was uh, uh, superseded by Brazil as the economic center of the overseas empire of Portugal. In 1683, after two naval assaults, the Maratha invaded Goa. Now the next topic is significance of the Portuguese. Most historians have observed that the coming of the Portuguese not only initiated what might be called the European era, it marked the emergence of naval power. The Cholas among others had been a naval power but it was now for the first time a foreign power had come to India by way of the sea. The Portuguese ships carried cannons and this was the first step in gaining monopoly over trade. With the threat, with the threat of uh, or actual use of force, the Portuguese declared their intention to abide by no rules except their own, and they were intent on getting a decisive advantage over the Indians and over the Indian uh, Ocean trading system. In the Malabar of the six, uh, 16th century, the Portuguese showed military innovation in their use of body armor, uh, matchlock men, and guns landed from the ship. The Portuguese may have contributed by example uh, by example to the uh, Mughal use of field guns and the artillery of the stirrup. However, an important military contribution made by the Portuguese on shore was the system of drilling groups of infantry on the Spanish model, introduced in the 1630s as a counter to Dutch pressure. The practice was adopted first by the French and English and later taken up by the Marathas and Sikh. And such armies of sepoys became, became new tools of empire in India. The Portuguese were master of improved techniques at sea, and their uh, multi-decked ships were heavily constructed, designed as they were to ride out Atlantic gal uh, gales rather than run before the regular monsoon. This permitted them to carry a heavier armaments. Their use of cas uh, castle pro and stern was a noteworthy method by which to repel or launch boarding parties. Indians, uh, Indians builders adapted both uh, to their own use. However, the Portuguese is skill at or organization as it as in the creation of royal uh, arsenals and dockyard and the maintenance of a regular system of pilots and mapping and pitting state forces against private merchant shipping was even more noteworthy. The Mughals and Marathas may uh, certainly have learned from the Portuguese, but the more certain hires of this knowledge were other Europeans, especially uh, the Dutch and the English in Asia. 
in india the memory of religious uh, persecution and uh, cruelty detracted from the other contribution made by the portuguese in the cultural field however it cannot be forgotten that the missionaries and the church were also teachers and patrons in india of the arts of the painters carvers and sculpture as in music they were uh, they were the uh, interpreters not just of portuguese but of european art to india the art of the silversmith and goldsmith flourished at goa and the place became a center of elaborate uh, filigree work fretted uh, foliage work and metal work embedding uh, jewels however though the uh, interior of churches built under the portuguese have plenty of woodwork and sculpture and sometimes painted ceiling they are generally simple in their architectural plan now so this was the coming of the portuguese right now coming to the dutch ab dutch aaye to unhone matlab kya kya kiya karke ye cheeze <coughs> so the dutch commercial enterprise led the dutch to undertake voyage to the east uh, cornelis the houtman was the first dutchman to reach uh, sumatra and bantam in 1596 in 602 the state general of the netherland amalgamated many trade uh, many trading companies into the east india company of the netherlands this company was also empowered to carry on war to conclude treaties to take possessions of treat, uh, of territory and to erect fortresses topic hai next dutch settlements ab isi ke andar sub topic hai theek hai dutch settlements after their arrival in india the dutch founded their first factory in masuli pattam in andhra in 1605 they went on uh, on to establish trading centers in different parts of india and thus and thus became a threat to the portuguese they captured naga uh, naga pattam near madras chennai from the portuguese and made it their main stronghold in south india the dutch established factories uh, on the coromandel coast in gujarat uttar pradesh bengal and bihar In 1609, they opened a factory in Pulikat, north of Madras. Their uh, their other principal factories in India were at Surat, 1616, Bimli Patam, 1641, Karaikal, 1645, Chinsura, 1653, Baranagar, uh, Baranagar, Kasim Bazar near Murshidabad, Balasore, Patna, uh, Nagapatam, 1658, and Cochin, uh, 1663. participating in the uh, redistributive on or, or uh, carrying trade they took to the island of the far east various uh, articles and merchandise from india they carried indigo manufactured in the yamuna valley and central india textiles and uh, silk from bengal gujarat and the coromandel uh, salt petre from bihar and opium and rice from the ganga valley next uh, sub topic hai anglo dutch rivalry The English were also at uh, this time rising to prominence in uh, eastern trade and this posed a serious challenge to the commercial interest of the Dutch commercial rivalry soon turned into bloody warfare the climax of the uh, enmity between the Dutch and the English in the east was uh, reached at uh, Amboina a, a place in present day Indonesia which the Dutch had captured from the Portuguese in 1605 where they massacred 10 englishmen and 9 japanese in 1623 this incident further intensified the rivalry between the two european companies after prolonged warfare both the both the parties came to a compromise in 1667 by which the british agreed to withdraw all their claims on indonesia and the dutch retired from india to concentrate on their more profitable trade in indonesia they monopolized the trade in black pepper and spices the most important indian commodities the dutch traders the dutch traded in uh, uh, were silk cotton indigo rice and opium next topic is decline of the dutch in india inka zyada kuch role tha nahi matlab aise um, the dutch got uh, drawn into the trade of the uh, malay archipelago further in the third anglo uh, dutch war 1672 say 74 communications uh, between surat and the new english settlements of bombay got cut due to which uh, three uh, home bound english ships were captured in the bay of bengal by the dutch forces the retaliation by the english resulted in the defeat of the dutch in the battle of hogli november 1759 which dealt a crushing blow to uh, dutch ambitions in india 
the dutch were not uh, much interested in empire building in india their concern were trade in any case their main commercial interest lay in the spice island of indonesia from where they earned a huge profit through business now the comes the mighty empire the english theek hai chaliye start karte hain the english sub topic hai charter of queen elizabeth 1 Francis Drake's voyage uh, around the world in 1580 and the English victory English victory over the Spanish Armada in 1588 generated a new sense of enterprise in the English encouraging sailors to venture out to the east as the knowledge grew to the high profits earned by the portuguese in uh, in eastern trade english traders also wanted a share so in 1599 a group of english merchants calling themselves the merchant um, the merchant adventure adventurers formed a company on december 31st 1600 queen elizabeth i issued a charter with rights of exclusive trading to the company named the governor and company of merchants of london trading into the east indies initially a monopoly of 15 years was granted which in may 1609 was extended indefinitely by a fresh charter as the dutch they were uh, already concentrating more on the east indies the english turned to india in search of textiles and other commodities of trade progress of the english company foothold uh, in west and south captain hawkins arrived in the court of jahangir in april 1609 itself but the mission to establish a factory at surat did not succeed it due to opposition from the portuguese and hawkins left agra in november 1611 In 1611 the English had started trading at Masuli Patnam on the south eastern coast of India and later established a factory there in 1616 It was in 1612 that Captain Thomas Best Captain Thomas Best defeated the Portuguese in the Sea of Surat and impressed Jahangir granted permission to the English in early 1613 to establish a factory at Surat under Thomas uh, Edward In 1615 Sir Thomas Roe came as an uh, accredited ambassador of James I to the court of Jahangir staying on there till February 1619 though he was unsuccessful in concluding a commercial treaty with the Mughal emperor he was able to secure a number of privileges including permission to set up factories at Agra Ahmedabad and Broch The English company did not have a smooth progress. It had to contend with the Portuguese and the Dutch in the beginning. But the changing situation helped them and turned things in their favor. Bombay had been gifted to King Charles II by the King of Portugal as dowry when Charles married the Portuguese princess Catherine in 1662. Bombay was given uh, given over to the East India Company as an annual payment of 10 pounds only in 1668. भाई साहब पूरा बॉम्बे दहेज में दे दिया गया था इट वॉज ओनली द पेमेंट ऑफ टेन पाउंड आज के हिसाब से टेन पाउंड कितना होता है एक पाउंड सौ रुपये मतलब हजार रुपये और हजार रुपये वो भी साल का भाई साहब है ना पेमेंट ऑफ टेन पाउंड ओनली इन सिक्सटीन सिक्सटी एट लेटर बॉम्बे वॉज मेड द हेड क्वार्टर बाई शिफ्टिंग द सीट ऑफ द वेस्टर्न प्रेजिडेंसी फ्रॉम सूरत टू बॉम्बे इन सिक्सटीन एटी सेवन सो देर वॉज देर वॉज टेसिट पीस There was also an Anglo-Dutch compromise as mentioned earlier by which the Dutch agreed not to interfere with the English company's trade in India. Thus the in thus the English were rid of two uh, two arch rivals in India. The English company's position was improved by the golden firman issued to them by the Sultan of Golconda in 1632. On a payment of 500 pagodas a year they earned the privilege of trading freely in the port freely in the ports of golconda a member of the masuli patnam uh, council the british merchant francis day in 1639 received from the ruler of chandragiri permission to build a fortified factory at madras which later became the fort uh, fort st george and replaced uh, Manus- masuli patnam as the headquarters of the english settlements in south india Thereafter the English extended their trading activities to the east and started factories at Hariharpur in the Mahanadi Delta and at Balasore in Odisha in 1633.
now the next topic is a uh, foothold in bengal right so um Bengal was uh, was then a large and rich province in India. Advanced in trade and commerce, commercial and political control over Bengal naturally appeared an attractive position to the profit-seeking English merchants. Bengal was also um, an important province of the Mughal Empire. Shah Shuja, the uh, the subedar or governor of Bengal in 1651, allowed the in English to trade in Bengal in return for an annual payment of rupees three thousand in lieu of all duties. My God, okay. Factories in Bengal were started in uh, at Hogli in sixteen fifty one and other places like Kasim Bazar, Patna, and Raj Mahal. Nevertheless, despite the privileges of the Farmans, the company's business was now and then obstructed by custom officers in the local checkpoints who asked for payment of tolls. In pursuance of its changed policy, the company wanted to have a fortified settlements at Hogli, so that force could be used if necessary. William H. William H., uh, the first agent and governor, was the company was the governor of the company in Bengal, appealed to Shastha Khan, the Mughal governor of Bengal, in August 1682, for redressal of the grievance. As nothing uh, came out of the appeal, hostilities broke out between the English and the Mughals. Four years later, Hogli was sacked by the Imperial Mughals in October 1686. The English uh, retaliated by capturing the Imperial forts at Thana, modern uh, Garden Reach, raiding uh, Hijli in East Midnapur, and storming the Mughal fortifications at Balasore. However, uh, the English were forced to leave Hogli and were sent to an unhealthy location at the mouth of the River Ganga. After the Mughal raid on Hogli, uh, Job Charnok, Charnok uh, a company agent, started a negotiation with the Mughals so as to return to a place called uh, Sutanoti. Charnok signed a treaty with Mughals in February 1690 and returned to uh, Sutanoti in August 1690. Thus, an English factory was established on February 10, 1691, the day an imperial firman was issued permitted, uh, permitting the English to continue uh, contentedly their trade in Bengal on payment of rupees three thousand a year in lieu of all duties. A zamindar in Bardhaman district, Soba Singh, rebelled, subsequently giving the English the pretext they were looking for to fortify their settlement at uh, Sutanoti in 1696. In 1698 the English succeeded in getting the permission to buy the zamindari of the three villages of Sutanoti Gobindpur and uh, Kalikata ya Kalighat usko bol sakte hain from their owner of uh, from the owners on payment of rupees 1200 the fortified settlement was named uh, Fort William in the year 1700 when it also became the seat of the Eastern Presidency Calcutta with Sir Charles Airy as its first president फरुखसियार फरमान ओके नेक्स्ट टॉपिक है अब फरुखसियार आते हैं यहाँ पे इन 1715 एन इंग्लिश मिशन लेड बाय जॉन सरमन टू द कोर्ट ऑफ द मुगल एम्प्रर फरुखसियार सेक्योर्ड थ्री फेमस फरमास गिविंग द कंपनी मेनी वैल्यूबल प्रिवलेजेस इन बंगाल गुजरात एंड हैदराबाद द फरमास द फरमास दस ऑप्टेंड वर रिगार्डेड द मैगना कार्टा ऑफ द कंपनी दे आर इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स फॉर First, in Bengal, the company's important uh, imports and exports were exempted from uh, additional customs duties, excepting the annual payment of rupees three thousand, as settled earlier. Second, the company was permitted to issue dastak, which is what we call passes, for the transportation of such goods. Third, the company was permitted to rent more lands around Calcutta. Fourth, in Hyderabad. The company retained its existing privileges of freedom from duties in trade and had to pay the prevailing rent only for Madras. Fifth, in Surat, for an annual payment of ten thousand rupees, the East India Company was exempted from the levy of all duties. Sixth, it was uh, decreed that the coins of the company minted at Bombay were to have currency throughout the Mughal Empire. <laughs> Apparently the English East India Company managed to earn a number of trading concessions 
in Bengal from the Mughal authority by means of flattery and diplomacy. But the English had to vanquish the French before French before they could be rid of competitors and establish their complete sway over India. Next heading is a uh, merging of two English companies. Hmm? After the English Revolution, uh, after the English Revolution of 1688, the Wings, with their uh, enhanced influence, opposed the monopoly of the East India Company. Thus, a rival company was formed, which deputed Sir William Norris as its ambassador to the court of Aurangzeb, January 1701 to April 1702 to gain trading privileges for itself. The new company, however, proved a failure. Under pressure from the Crown and the Parliament, the two companies were amalgamated in 1708 under the title of United Company of Merchants of England Trading to the East Indies. Now, two companies were merged, this was the East India Company from 1708 to 1873, which was to establish British political power in India. Correct? Now, we have to the colonists, that is the France. Okay? So, the main topic is the French. This is the the foundation of French centers in India. Although the French harbored a wish to engage in the commerce of the East, uh, East since the opening year of the 16th century, their appearance on the Indian coast was late. Indeed, the French were the last Europeans to come to India with the purpose of trade. During the reign of Louis XVI, Louis XIV, sorry, during the reign of Louis XIV, the uh, the king's famous minister Colbert laid the foundation of the uh, Campagne des Indes Orientales. This is a French word. This is called French East India Company in 1664, in which the king also took a deep interest. The Campagne des Indes Orientales was granted a 50 year monopoly on French trade in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. The French king also granted the company a concession in perpetuity for the uh, island of Madagascar as well as any other territory it could, can, uh, it could conquer. The company spent a lot of its money and resources in trying, uh, in trying to revive the colonies of Madagascar but without any success. Then in 1667, uh, Francius Caron headed an expedition to India, setting up a factory in Surat. Merkara, a Persian, uh, a Persian who accompanied Caron, founded another French factory in Masuli Patna in 1669 after obtaining a patent from the Sultan of Golconda. In 1673, the French obtained a permission from Shesta Khan, the Mughal Subedar of Bengal, to establish a township at Chandranagar near Calcutta. Now, next heading is subheading uh, Pondicherry, uh, nerve center of French power in India. In 1673, Sher Khan Lodi, the governor of Valikondapuram under the Bijapur Sultan, granted Francois Fra Martin, the director of the Masuli Patnam factory, a site for a settlement. Pondicherry was founded in 1674. In the same year, Francois Martin replaced Caron as the French governor. The French company established, uh, established its factories in other parts of the, uh, India, also particularly in the coastal region. Mahe, Karaikal, Balasor and Kasim Bazar were a few important trading centers of the French East India Company. After taking charge of Pondicherry in 1674, Francis Martin developed it as a place of importance. It was indeed the stronghold of the French in India. Now the subheading is Early Setbacks to the French East India Company. Okay? The French position in India was badly affected with the outbreak of war between the Dutch and the French, bolstered by their alliance with the English since the revolution of 1688, the Dutch captured Pondicherry in 1693. Although the Treaty of Ryswick concluded in September 1697 restored Pondicherry to the French, the Dutch garrison held, uh, held on to it for two more years. Once again, under, Fra uh, under Francis Martin, able guidance, Pondicherry flourished and turned out to be the most important settlement of the French in India. Again, there was a bad turn in the fortunes of the French company in India when the war of Spanish succession broke out in Europe. 
consequent to this they had uh, uh, they had to abandon their factories at surat masuli patnam and uh, bantam in the early 18th century the french in india had another setback when francis martin died in december 31st 1706 now next sub heading is reorganization of the french company theek okay? hai in 1720 The French company was reorganized as the Perpetual Company of the Indies, which revived its strength. This was this was further enhanced by the uh, stewardship of two active and wise governors, Lenore and Dumas, between 1720 and 1742. Further, the French India was backed by the French possessions of uh, Mauritius and reunion in the Southern Indian Ocean. now the heading is uh, the anglo french struggle for supremacy the carnatic wars carnatic wars bahut important hai so you please go through it very 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 properly theek hai hmm <coughs> chaliye first aate hain background of uh, rivalry theek hai sab baithenge do the british and the french came to india for trading purposes they were ultimately drawn into the politics of india both had vision of establishing political power over the region the anglo french rivalry in india reflected the traditional rivalry of england and france throughout their histories it began with the outbreak of the austrian uh, war of succession and ended with the conclusion of the seven years war specifically in india the rivalry in the form of three carnatic war decided once for all that the english and not the french were to became uh, become masters of india in 1740 the political situation in south india was uncertain and confused nizam asaf jah of hyderabad was old and fully engaged in battling the marathas in the western deccan while his subordinates were uh, speculating upon the consequences of his death to the south of his kingdom lay the coromandel coast without any strong ruler to maintain a balance of power indeed there was the remnant of the old vijayanagar empire in interior mysore cochin and travancore on the malabar coast and in the east the small states of madura jise madurai bolte hain tanjore tanjavur and uh, trichinopoly trichinopally the decline of hyderabad was a signal for the end of muslim expansionism and the english adventurers got their plans ready also there was the maratha king of tanjore providing the peshwa of pune an excuse for interference whenever he pleased so first carnatic war 1740 se uh, 1748 to ye carnatic wars bahut important hai kindly go through it very very properly hmm? so टाइम बता दिया इट इज अडिंग फर्स्ट कार्टिक वॉर सेवनटीन फोर्टी से सेवनटीन फोर्टी एट बैकग्राउंड कार्टिक वॉर्स बैकग्राउंड है कार्टिक वॉर्स द नेम गिवेन बाय द यूरोपियंस टू द कॉरमंडल कोस्ट एंड इट्स हिंटरलैंड द फर्स्ट कार्टिक वॉर वॉज एन एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द एंग्लो फ्रेंच वॉर इन यूरोप विच वॉज कॉज बाय द ऑस्ट्रियन वॉर ऑफ सक्सेशन इमीडिएट कॉज क्या है इसका ऑल दो फ्रांस conscious of its uh, relatively weaker position in india did not favor an extension of hostility hostilities to india the english navy under uh, barnet seized some french ships to provoke france uh, france retaliated by seizing madras in 1746 with the help of the fleet from mauritius the isles of france under uh, admiral la bodinus the french governor of mauritius ठीक है दस बिगेन द फर्स्ट कार्टिक वॉर वॉट इज द रिजल्ट रिजल्ट द फर्स्ट कार्टिक वॉर एंडेड इन 1748 फोर्टी एट वेन द ट्रीटी ऑफ एक्सला चैपल वॉज साइंड ब्रिंगिंग द ऑस्ट्रियन वॉर ऑफ सक्सेशन टू अ कंक्लूजन अंडर द टर्म टर्म्स ऑफ दिस ट्रीटी मद्रास वॉज हैंडेड बैक टू द इंग्लिश एंड द फ्रेंच इन टर्न गॉट देयर टेरिटरीज इन नॉर्थ अमेरिका सिग्निफिकेंस क्या है The first Carnatic War is remembered for the Battle of Saint Thomas in Madras, fought between the uh, French forces and the forces of Anwaruddin, the Nawab of the Nawab of Carnatic, to whom the English appealed for help. A small French army under Captain Paradise defeated the strong Indian army under Mahfuz Khan at uh, Saint Thomas on the banks of the River Adyar. 
This was an eye-opener for the Europeans in India. It revealed that even a small disciplined army could easily defeat a much larger Indian army. Further, this war adequately brought out the importance of naval force in the Anglo-French conflict in the Deccan. Second Carnatic War is 1749-54. Okay? Background care. The background for the Second Carnatic War was provided by, by revelry in India. Duplex, the French governor who had successfully led the French forces in the First Carnatic War, sought to increase his power and French political influence in southern India by interfering in local dynastic disputes to defeat the English. Immediate cause The opportunity was provided by the death of Nizamul Mulk, the founder of the independent kingdom of Hyderabad, in 1748, and the release of Chanda uh, Sahib, the son-in-law of Dost Ali and Nawab of Karnatik by the Maratha in the same year. The accession of Naz Nazir Jung, the son of Nizam, to the throne of Hyderabad was opposed by Muzaffar Jung, the grandson of the Nawab, who laid claim who laid claim to the throne, saying that the Mughal emperor had appointed him as the governor of the Karnatik. In the Karnatik, the appointment of Anwaruddin Khan as the Nawab was resented by Chanda Sahib. The French supported the claims of uh, Muzaffar Jung and Chanda Sahib in the Deccan and Karnatik, respectively, while the English sided with Nazi Jung and Anwaruddin. Causes of War The combined armies of Muzaffar Jung, Chanda Sahib, and the French defeated and killed Anwaruddin at the Battle of Ambur near Vellore in 1749. Muzaffar Jung became the subedar of Deccan and Duplex was appointed governor of all the Mughal territories to the south of the river Krishna. A French army under Busy was stationed at Hyderabad to secure French interests there. Territories near Pond Pondicherry and also some uh, areas on the Orissa coast, including Masuli Patnam, <coughs> were ceded to the French. Having failed to provide effective assistance to Muhammad Ali at Trichinopoly, Robert Clive, then an agent factor of the English company, put forward the proposal for a diver diversionary attack on the governor of Madras, uh, Saunders. He, su he suggested a sudden raid on Arcot, the capital of the Carnatic, so as to relieve the pressure on Trichinopoly. He reasoned that in such an event, Chanda Sahib would rush to save his capital. Thus, in August 1751, with only a force of 210 men, Robert Clive attacked and captured Arcot. As expected, Chanda Sahib hastened, uh, hastened to his capital, uh, taking a force of 4,000 men from Trichinopoly, but failed to get back the fort even after a siege of 53 days, from September 23 to November 14. Now, Masur, Tanjur, and the Maratha chief, Mur Murari Rao, came to the aid of Trichinopoly and of Clive and Stringer, uh, Stringer Lawrence, Trichinopoly was first relieved, relieved of its siege, while General Law of France with Chanda Sahib remained cooped up in the island of Srirangam. They were forced to uh, surrender in June 1752, when Muhammad Ali executed Chanda Sahib, the British failing to interfere. Okay. अच्छा एक बॉक्स है ये भी मैं ये भी मैं पढ़ दे रहा हूँ ठीक है बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है राइज एंड फॉल ऑफ डुप्लेक्स इन इंडिया ठीक है डुप्लेक्स का रोल बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट है जब हम लोग बात करते हैं और फ्रेंच के बहुत ही अच्छे जनरल थे ये सो राइज एंड फॉल ऑफ डुप्लेक्स इन इंडिया जोसेफ फ्रांसिस डुप्लेक्स बॉर्न इन सिक्सटीन नाइन्टी वॉज द सन ऑफ अ वेल्दी फार्मर जनरल ऑफ टैक्सेस एंड डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ द कंपनी ऑफ द इंडीज ही गॉट हर हाई पोजिशन एट पॉंडिचेरी इन सेवनटीन allegedly on the basis of influence of his father at Pond at pondicherry he made a lot of money by private trade which was then permitted to servants to the french company in december 1726 he was suspending uh, he was suspending owing to drastic change in the constitution of the Fran uh, of the french company and some confusions arising out of that in 1730 duplex won his case and was appointed as governor of chandranagor uh, as compensation. In 1741, he was appointed as the Director General of French Colonies in India. Later, he was conferred the title of Nawab 
by the Mughal emperor and the subedar of Deccan, Muzaffar Jung. According to historians, Duplex possessed the qualities of an administrator, a diplomat, and a leader besides having political insight with a broad vision. Duplex in the role of administration, administrator. Okay, heading up. In 1741, Duplex became the Governor General of Pondicherry. He found he found Pondicherry facing several problems: Maratha invasions, famines, uncultivated land, and chaotic conditions in the Carnatic. Apart from these, the directors or the directors of the company sought a drastic cut in expenditure of the French East India Company, owing to the priority given to the French colonies in North America. So, Duplex reduced uh, public expenditure despite opposition from his council and balanced income and expenditure, coupled with a cut on salaries on of officers. However, he decided to disobey the directors on the matter of fortification of settlements. He enhanced the defenses of Pondicherry, even uh, even spending a large sum from his personal wealth. He made Pondicherry the uh, emporium of commerce in South India by taking practical steps to develop the trade of the colony. Later, the directors of the company praised Duplex for taking the right decisions, even in contradiction of the directors. Next heading is Duplex as a master of diplomacy. The analysis of the first two Carnatic Wars proves the diplomacy of Duplex as a leader who visualized the path of the European conquest of India. Duplex used the Nawab of Carnatic to forbid the English uh, forbid the English from waging waging war in his territories, so that uh, that is so that the French settlements at Pondicherry. could be protected till the french forces acquired enough strength in return the nawab was promised to madras after the english got defeated but duplex using his diplomacy did not did not give madras to the nawab and even defeated him at uh, st thomas in 1746 duplex convinced uh, admiral la bojnes to break uh, promises made to the english citing exa- citing examples from history that promises made under certain circumstances were never binding further he said that since the position of the governor general was superior to that of the commander of navy the compact entered into between the latter and the english was ultra wires thus he was able to convince his subordinate to do what was considered unethical in general terms but best suited for one's nation duplex was the first european to interfere in the internal politics of the indian rulers he supported muzaffar jung for hyderabad and chanda sahib for uh, carnatic and his candidates emerged successful and in return gave great concession to duplex duplex was in fact the or- the originator of the practice of sub- uh, subsidiary alliance in india he placed a french army at hyderabad at the expense of the subedar why duplex failed in india heading duplex was recalled in 1754 due to the uh, initial defeat of the french army in the second carnatic war and the heavy cost incurred by the company due to uh, duplex political decisions many historians have called the recall of duplex by the directors as a blunder blunder a result of a compromise between Fra- uh, france and england over issues in america however uh, there were some weaknesses in duplex also which can be put in brief as follows jaise ki uski weaknesses kya thi aap dekh sakte hain pehla point duplex suffered from an over uh, sanguine temperament he hoped too often for too long thus losing the advantage in critical situation second The peers of Duplex did not like his autocratic behavior and on many occasions quarreled with him on this matter. Third, Duplex was not a man of action. He planned a campaign, directed his lieutenants but never led an army in the battlefield like Lawrence or Clive. The French failed to capture uh, Trichinopoly in 1752-53. because the schemes thought out by duplex could not be turned into action by his commanders okay so this was the role of the duplex no doubt he is a fantastic leader general lekin kahin na kahin har ek agar kuch ek coins mein agar head hote hain to ek dusra face tail bhi hota hai 
ठीक है पॉजिटिव है तो उसके नेगेटिव भी हैं नेक्स्ट अब आते हैं मेन पे रिजल्ट क्या था कार्टिक वॉस का ठीक है सेकेंड कार्टिक वॉर का रिजल्ट द फ्रेंच अथॉरिटीज एनॉयड एट द हैवी फाइनेंशियल लॉसेज दैट डुप्लेक्स पॉलिसी इन्वॉल्व डिसाइडेड टू रिकॉल हिम इन सेवनटीन फिफ्टी फोर सक्सीडेड डुप्लेक्स एज द फ्रेंच गवर्नर जनरल इन इंडिया गोजियो गोजी एडॉप्टेड अ पॉलिसी ऑफ नेगोसिएशन विद द इंग्लिश एंड कंक्लूडेड अ ट्रीटी विथ दैम द इंग्लिश एंड द फ्रेंच अग्रीड नॉट टू इंटरफेयर इन द क्वेरस ऑफ नेटिव प्रिंसेस ऑल्सो ईच पार्टी वॉज लेफ्ट इन पोजिशंस ऑफ द टेरिटरीज एक्चुअली ऑक्यूपाइड बाई दैम एट द टाइम ऑफ द ट्रीटी According to historians, the fear of serious uh, repercussion in America prompted the French to suspend hostilities in India. Implications came. It became evident that the uh, that the countenance of Indian authority was no longer necessary for European success. Rather, Indian authority itself was becoming dependent on European support. Muhammad Ali in the Carnatic and and Salabat and Salabat Jung in Hyderabad became clients rather than patrons hmm? next third carnatic war 1758 se 63 theek hai background in europe when austria wanted to recover uh, silesia in 1756 silesia in 1756 the seven year war 1756 to 63 is started britain and france uh, britain and france were once again on opposite sides course of war in india in 1758 the french army under count de lely count de lely captured the english forts of st david and vijayanagaram now the english became offensive and inflicted heavy losses on the french fleet under admiral uh, d'arc at masuli patnam next heading battle of bondiwash The decisive battle of the Third Carnatic War was won by the English on January 22, 1760 at Vandivash or Vandivash in Tamil Nadu. General Airy Coot of the English totally routed uh, totally routed the French army under Count Thomas uh, Arthur de Lely and took uh, Bussy as prisoner. Pondicherry was uh, gallant, uh, gallantly defended. by lally for 8 months before he surrendered on january uh, 16th 1761 with the loss of jinji and mahe the french power in india was reduced to its lowest lally after being taken as prisoner of war at london returned to france when uh, where he was imprisoned and executed in 1766 bechara next heading a result and significant The Third Carnatic War uh, proved decisive. Although the Treaty of Peace of Paris, 1763, restored to the French their factories in India, the French political influence disappeared after the war. Thereafter, the French, like their Portuguese and Dutch counterparts in India, confined themselves to their small enclaves and to commerce. And to commerce, the English became the supreme European power in the Indian subcontinent. since the dutch had already been defeated in the battle of, uh, battle of bidara in 1759 the battle of plassey in 1757 is usually regarded by historians as the decisive event that brought about ultimate british rule over india however one cannot quite ignore the view that the true turning point for control of the subcontinent was the victory of british forces over the french forces at vandivash in 1760 The victory at Vandivash left the English East India Company with no European rival in India. Thus, they were ready to take over the rule of the entire country. Significantly, in the Battle of Vandivash, natives served in both the armies as sepoys. It makes one thing irrespective of which side they won. There was an uh, inevitability about the fall of India to Europe uh, Euro- to European invaders. there was a lack of sensitivity uh, to geopolitics of the day as well as a lack of foresight on the part of native rulers next heading a causes for the english success and the french failure 
द इंग्लिश कंपनी वॉज अ प्राइवेट एंटरप्राइज दिस क्रिएटेड अ सेंस ऑफ एंथुजियाजम एंड सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंस अमंग द पीपल विद लेस गवर्नमेंटल कंट्रोल ओवर इट एंड दिस कंपनी कुड टेक इंस्टेंट डिसीजन वेन नीडेड विदाउट वेटिंग फॉर द अप्रूवल ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट द फ्रेंच कंपनी ऑन द अदर हैंड वॉज अ स्टेट कंसर्न इट वॉज कंट्रोल्ड एंड रेगुलेटेड बाय द फ्रेंच गवर्नमेंट एंड वॉज हेम्ड इन बाय गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसीज एंड डिलेज इन डिसीजन मेकिंग द इंग्लिश नेवी वॉज सुपीरियर टू द फ्रेंच नेवी इट हेल्प टू कट ऑफ द वाइटल सी लिंक बिटवीन द फ्रेंच पोजिशन इन इंडिया एंड फ्रांस The English held three important places namely Calcutta, Bombay and Madras whereas the French had only Pondicherry. The French subordinated their commercial interest to territorial ambitions which made the French company short of funds. In spite of their imperialistic motives the British never neglected their commercial interest so they always had the funds and uh, and the consequent sound financial uh, conditions to help them significantly in the wars against their rivals. a major factors in the success of the english in india was the superiority of the commanders in the british camps in comparison to the long list of leaders of the english side sir eric coote major stringer lawrence robert clive and many others there was only duplex on the french side ye bhi baat hai theek hai chale next ek box hamare paas about the goods in trade initially theek hai so let let us have a look into it There are accounts uh, by various European travelers and traders about the activities in port towns such as Surat, which give uh, which give details of the uh, intricate steps that went into the creation of fabrics collectively called Indian. Great demand was there for cotton uh, long cloth, usually 35 to 50 meter in length, uh, Salem pores, uh, staple cotton cloth, and Morris uh, superior quality cotton cloth. other much desired fabrics were the painted clothes and prints and prints the silks and dyes these textiles were not just in demand in europe but also in other parts of asia indians uh, indians had traded in textiles for centuries before the europeans arrived in china japan and the indonesian archipelago indian cotton was popular for its lightweight yet strong qualities when the dutch english and french acquired material from india uh, it was not only for their home countries but for transport to malacca to or uh, malacca or java for example uh, where they were traded for spices by the 18th century the french had colored patterns patterned handkerchiefs especially woven for particular islands markets which proved a successful entrepreneurial efforts a corollary or to the trade in textiles and spices was the trade was a trade in slaves it is generally considered that slave trade concerned europe africa and the americas the new world which we said the new world but this ignores the fact that trade between europe and asia also helped to sustain slavery french ships took european goods to uh, goods to asia where they uh, acquired cowrie cowrie shells and uh, indian textile that were highly valued in west africa traders exchanged these goods in africa for slaves who were sent to the colonies of france in the americas the circle was completed says the yale center for the study of globalization when sugar and other goods from the americas were loaded on board and shipped back to france When the French East India Company started trading in India they entered an uh, already well established complex economic system and intricate network of production negotiations delivery and distribution large commercial fleets as well as prosperous shore based business uh, businesses were run by indian merchants weavers and merchants worked with uh, overland freight operators and brokers who worked with exporters and ship owners these agents uh, had also to also to negotiate with local state official for commercial privileges the european traders had to learn well established rules and practices and successfully collaborate with indigenous envoys the factories of all the european trading all the european trading groups were to be found in practically the same places at the peak of the indian trade the demand for indian goods exceeded the supply of the supply by weavers and other artisans even so there was no serious rivalry initially but 
but as the three uh, companies the dutch the english and the french grew more competitive the english better funded and better conversant in local businesses practices and customs were able to expand their factory outposts to larger uh, industrial towns under their jurisdiction gradually uh, these commercial strongholds turned into political enclaves ultimately enabling the english to expand and consolidate their power in uh, power and control all over india now the uh, next is the danes okay ye hum log sab pad chuke hain portuguese ka pad chuke hain french ho gaya and english bhi ho gaya ab danes aata hai the danish east india company was established in 1616 1616 and in 1620 they founded a factory at uh, trankebar near tanjore on the eastern coast of india their principal settlement was uh, at serampur near calcutta the danish factories the danish factories which were not important at any time were sold to the british government in 18 uh, 1845 the danes are better known for their missionary activities than for commerce theek hai missionary activity means usse ki wo apni christianity ko propagate kar rahe the usko phaila rahe the nothing more than that aur unko religion se thoda zyada pyar tha and commercial activities mein wo dhyan nahi bhi de pa rahe the now main heading is why the english succeeded against other Euro- european powers of all the european nations who came as traders to india after new sea routes were discovered england emerged as the most powerful and successful by the end of the 18th century the major factors which can be attributed for the success of the english against other european powers portugal the netherlands france and denmark in the world is in general and in india in particular were as follows sabse pehla topic kya hai matlab isi mein main heading hai subheading structure and nature of the trading companies the english east india company formed through amalgamation of several rival companies at home was controlled by a board of directors whose members were elected annually the shareholders of the company exercised considerable influence as the votes should be brought and sold through purchase of shares the trading companies of france and portugal were largely owned by the state and their nature was in many ways uh, feudalistic in the french company the monarch had more than 60% share and its directors uh, were nominated by the monarch from the shareholders who were supposed to carry out the decisions of two high commissioners appointed by the government the shareholders took very little interest in promoting the prosperity of the company because the state guaranteed a, div- uh, a dividend sorry because the state guaranteed a dividend uh, to the shareholders the lack of public interest could be uh, inferred from the fact that between 1725 and 1765 there was no meeting of the shareholders and the company was simply managed as a department of the state next heading naval superiority the royal navy the royal navy of britain was not only uh, the largest it was the most advanced of its time the victory against the spanish uh, armada and against the french at trafalgar had but the royal navy at the peak of the european naval forces in india too the british were able to defeat the portuguese and the french due to strong and fast mov- uh, movement of the naval ships the english learned from the portuguese the importance of an efficient navy and improved their own fleet technologically next heading is industrial revolution the industrial revolution started in england in the early 18th century with the uh, with the invention of new machines like the spinning jenny steam engine the power loom and several others these machines greatly improved production in the fields of textiles uh, metallurgy steam power and agriculture the industrial revolution reached other european nations late and this helped england to maintain uh, to maintain its hegemony next heading is uh, military skill and discipline theek hai wo to aap jante hain military skill aur discipline mein discipline do bahut hi the jo european uh, militaries hoti thi the british uh, soldiers were a disciplined lot and well trained the british commanders were strategic strategists who tried new tactics in warfare 
technological developments equipped the military well all this combined to enable smaller groups of english fighters defeat larger armies next subheading is stable government with the exception of the glorious revolution of 1688 britain witnessed stable government with efficient monarchs other european nations like france witnessed violent revolution in 1789 and afterwards the napoleonic wars napoleon's defeat in 1815 significantly weakened the france position and from then on it was forced to side with britain the italian got united as a nation as late in 1861 and the dutch and spain were also involved in the 80 year 80 year war in the 17th century which weakened portuguese imperialism the dutch east india company affected by bankruptcy in 1800 1800 coupled with the revolution in 1830 1830 was forced to sell its positions to britain and quit asia next heading is lesser zeal for religion britain was less zealous about religion and less uh, interested in spreading christianity as compared to spain portugal and dutch thus its rule was far more acceptable to the subject than that of other colonial powers next heading is use of debt market one of the major and innovative reasons why british uh, why britain succeeded between the mid 18th century and the mid 19th century while other european nations fell was that it used the debt market to fund its war the world's first central bank the bank of england was established to sell government debt to the money markets on the promise of a decent return on britain's defeating rival countries like france and spain britain was thus enabled to spend much more on its military than its rivals britain's rival france uh, could not match the expenditure of the english between uh, 1694 and 1812 1812 first under the monarchs then under the revolutionary governments and finally under napoleonic uh, napoleon bonaparte France simply went bankrupt with its outdated ways of raising money okay so this was the end of the chapter and we are just coming with the summary also and you can just go through the summary uh, as it is written that whatever we have read in this chapter that is being consolidated and integrated in the summary section okay till then bye bye and good day